We've looked at raid cards, gosh, I don't know, 20, 30 times over the years. They are always inside everything and usually <laughs> powering everything. Yeah, oftentimes. And while we think about things like JBODs and putting together a bunch of SAS or SATA hard drives, RAID and NVMe has been a delicate balance and hasn't been the greatest relationship to this point. Well, yeah, you usually think of like, hey, I have a ton of hard drives, I have a ton of SATA or SAS SSDs. We've seen two or three NVMe drives surpass the bandwidth that you could pretty much put through a traditional hardware RAID card. Right, and so when we think about Gen 5 now, where the top line on these drives is what, 14,000 meg a second, if we're just looking at top yeah, end around. reads, then uh, we get concerned about how to harness that much read and write power in these SSDs. Now, when we looked at PERC 12, the Broadcom silicon underlying that was an adaptation of their prior SATA SAS silicon. It supported SATA SAS and NVMe, so it was a progression, and in many ways, that PERC 12 card with the Dell systems was a good step forward. Oh well, yeah, the PERC 11 was, feels unfair to say it's slow, but PERC 11 to PERC 12 was a huge improvement on things like 4K random write performance, which was just painful on that previous generation card, where I think it was the first to really support right. any NVMe. It fit the role that you wanted it to do, but there was still a lot left on the table. Yeah, and that left the door open actually for a lot of solutions like Grade to use a GPU to get full performance out of those drives. But in some cases, the dedicated RAID card is still like a, a touchstone for storage servers, and it's because of the ages of reliability, resiliency, and the support. I mean, from a uh, driver uh, from a driver perspective, a lot of the I don't want to say LSI uh, stack, but a lot of the LSI, Broadcom yeah. stack, um, it's been there forever. So you could go into pretty much any operating system, and by default the card just shows up, and you can make it a lot faster, but you have a lot of situations where there might be legacy applications that just see your device, mm -hmm. regardless if it's hard drives or SAS drives or NVMe, it just sees it. No, it's a good point, and while we're talking about Dell PowerEdge and Perk 13 today, uh, the Perk 13 family at large, and then we'll get into our, our cards specifically, that's a good point, that the HBAs and RAID cards for Broadcom are notorious for being able to drop in any server and as long as you cable them up, you should see all the drives in pretty much any operating environment that exists, any hardware platform that exists, right? Well, yeah, and that's been one of the advantages when you go into virtualization or other areas where you might not be able to aggregate drives unless you, like on VMware's side, right. you couldn't really aggregate drives unless you go to vSAN, but if you want some level of uh, resiliency at a single node, you could go hardware RAID with it and then still present it into the uh, virtualization software. So let's talk about that. I've got the, the cards. Kevin's already removed them oh so delicately from the assistant system, I promise. You did this delicately. Yes, very yes. careful. And this is a dual configuration setup. So we've got an R7715 here. Each card will support up to 16 NVMe Gen 5 SSDs, NVMe only with this particular product. Now in the Dell catalog, this is the 975i. That's yes, the H9, H9, H975A. And the underlying silicon is the uh, Broadcom SAS 51XX family, right? Yes, and being an NVMe native drive, it still has that <laughs> little SAS bit left to it. Those guys, those guys uh, at, at Broadcom, deep in the, the bowels of the RAID production so has mechanism, still calls it SAS. They just won't let go because that's what storage guys do. They just hang on to the old, old names and old ways of doing things. Anyway, be that as it may. NVMe only. This is the dual configuration. Here we go, B camera. And here, C camera. And we've got the battery backup. You've got all the hardware stuff. Capacitor that... backup. They use uh, solid state capacitors now instead of batteries, which okay. gives you some um, increased temperature controls. I mean, you don't, the old lithium batteries, I mean, they lasted a long time, but you did have concerns with uh, temperature ratings and a, it, it was a wear item over time. Right. In the battery, just to kind of re-litigate re, uh, the, the reasons for RAID with the data protection scheme, the batteries help protect rights data in flight, flight. Yeah. in case of a power loss in the system, which makes sure that uh, you always get those rights all the way to your storage. Now, the Dell configuration is interesting, and they did this in prior generations, but if you've experienced RAID cards in other platforms, you may not have seen it the way Dell does it in PowerEdge. 
talk a little bit about the configuration here because these go in the front of the system. So if you've ever seen you know, some of the older braid cards that are cabled. Let me go it, grab one. Okay. Kevin's gonna go grab one because as we do, we have things everywhere in this lab. You have your PCI interface with an edge card, full height card, this was available in different variants. So same basic thing that we saw on the um, uh, H965i, but you have your um, little, you have your drive connectors. So right. this, uh, when we tested this, uh, device, we had a external JBOF, mm -hmm. um, but really you'd end up having a RAID card in the back of the chassis, right. you have cabling going from the rear to the front, and it may not be the most elegant, and while it might look cluttered, one of the problems that, come, uh, that you run into is airflow. Airflow. So the more cables in the system that aren't measured and aren't very precise, it can cause airflow problems, which in these systems with, in this case, we've got 32 E3S SSDs. We've got the uh, the PERC 13 cards, and we've also got GPUs in the back of the system. So flanked in riser, what, one in five, we've got H100s. So we're trying to do a lot in this system. Airflow is really critical, and having these cards up in the front of the system controls the cable runs to a large extent from the drives to, to the RAID cards. Uh, but it also makes the overall system a little more flexible because now that we've used these slots with the GPUs, instead of using riser card slots for the RAID cards as well, we can use those for I.O., other GPUs, other stuff, conceivably. Well, yeah, and it makes an easier job for Dell because they can go in and basically change the back two-thirds of the server, be it right. a 7715 or R770 or 7725, and keep that NVMe structure up front relatively consistent and change out everything as you need for that. And it's, if you had a lot of cabling going around, that may not be as easy, or just field servicing. So let's talk about the cabling, because we've dissected, or taken the lid off, taken the, the card out. Talk about the cabling of what we can see here looking down, and maybe you want to take this shroud off just to clear some space. Well, I can't do this. Uh, this shroud cannot come off because it's underneath the uh, GPU risers. Never mind. Let's take a look at the board from what we can see because the cable runs are, are important to this conversation. On this layout, each card gets uh, three, uh, three connectors. Right. And, and we can see that here on each one of these cards. Yeah, and so each of these cards has a uh, Gen 5 by 16 interface. So you have uh, one lead from each card that goes back to the motherboard. And then you have uh, two leads that go to the SSDs that they control. So okay. you have a bank, uh, you have two banks of eight, and that's where you have two additional cables go to each of the cards, and that's for left and right. And while these cards could probably support more SSDs in a larger, say, behind a PCI switch, mm -hmm. this configuration makes it more neat and tidy, especially from how these drive, each drive gets its own dedicated bandwidth into the card and you end up having greater performance per individual drive. Which is also critical for signal integrity issues. We've heard that a lot in these uh, in the shift to the EDSFF form factors, that that's important and uh, an increasing challenge as we step up in PCIe generations. Gen well, 6 is going to be another whole set of, of challenges. Well, yeah, and when you look at how Dell designed their platforms without NVMe hardware RAID cards, they've gone away with PCI switching from the uh, SSD perspective. They're old. Uh, by 24 um, uh, U.2 chassis, you ended up having a uh, PCI switch on that backplane, where now you go from, I think it's going from 16 SSDs to anything greater. Instead of having four lanes per an SSD, you get two, with the exception of a new upcoming, so, or with one of the uh, a more storage-oriented uh, yeah, platforms. The, the, the 7225 XD, yeah? Yes. So this one now, we did the, the drives 16 to each, which is actually kind of interesting too, because with the two GPUs, you can streamline how the data gets to the GPUs in a certain way. Yeah, so that's another interesting perspective. And this is one where uh, if you don't have GPUs in your uh, workflow, this may not really matter. And you might be focused on like, hey, the limit for each of these cards called 56 gigabytes per second in and out. Mm -hmm. That may be a bottleneck for your system. If you have it going to a GPU, it's a by 16 Gen 5 device. It has the same bottleneck as your card. So you just right. want your card to be as fast as really that, that standalone interface. Mm -hmm. And two cards, two GPUs, you get a pretty nice balance there. So let's talk about performance a little bit because we've not talked about that at all yet. And so going from PERC 
uh, 12, 11 to 12 was a big jump, but, but 13, 12 to 13 is an order of magnitude better. I think the high level numbers we saw a uh, read increase of like 88, 90%, and the rights were like 300 plus percent better on per 13. The main difference uh, between the two cards, you go from a Gen 4 to a Gen 5 nano right. device, uh, and you effectively double your bandwidth. Right. Now, in practice, though, so in practice, though, most people are going to be using uh, RAID 5 or RAID 6, some sort of parity protection. And that's where you start seeing a larger spread in performance between these cards. So uh, on read bandwidth, we had about 88% improvement of uh, performance. Write bandwidth, though, 318%. Right. I mean, it's it's almost tragic to think about the SSDs not being able to run like they want to run, especially on the writes. But this unlocks uh, a lot of that performance. Well, yeah. Small block performance, we have 31%. And uh, small, oh, small block read performance, up 31%. Small block write performance... Uh, and this was just a single pool on each card. You can get a little bit higher performance you can in other ways. On 4K ran and write, we're greater than 450%. Ah, there we go. 450%. Or more. Yes. Uh, and that's just the high-level numbers, sort of the hero numbers that, that gets um, tech marketers excited. But when we did the testing, you and Devonch and Dylan, you guys put this th thing through the ringer, looking at AI workloads, too, from a GDSIO perspective and, uh, you know, a couple other things. Well, yeah, we were running GDSIO ML per file. A lot of tests you'll find in our review, uh -huh. including even performance during rebuild scenarios. Uh, that's another critical point. So when we fail to drive while running workload and then let it reinitialize, you still saw a really great performance. Yeah, and that's kind of, it was an interesting trade-off where this card, you can you can get so much performance out of it while it's still rebuilding that it, its rebuild uh, speed slows down slightly, but it's more of a balance where if you, if you need your workload to stay online and maybe you don't care that the time required to rebuild your array is going to be a bit longer, mm -hmm. you could still get fantastic performance out of this, which it's not really, you're not really worried about a uh, downtime. You're just like, hey, it's maybe a little bit slower during this time period. And I think it's a practical thing too, because as we talk about AI workloads in the enterprise, a lot of them are going to be done in systems like this with edge card GPUs, with storage that you may want RAID protected because if you're running these workloads and you're using uh, either a software RAID that eats up a lot of resources like the CPU and other things in the system, uh, it may not be quite as reliable as the, the ruggedization that's built into these RAID algorithms or no rate at all, and you have a failure with an SSD or one just falls offline, they do that. Well, yeah, not that, everyone has a large, very high-performing external storage array to attach these. Or that, too. You might be leveraging internal storage, which 32 drives, 61 terabyte drives, I mean... Or more, can, yeah. yeah. So you can... The, this kind of solution lets you keep your data resilient, which is always what RAID's been about. We all know that. But resiliency now means a little bit different things when it comes to AI versus like a, a database workload that you know is critical, but AI, you've got all these expensive resources, all these GPUs that are cranking. If you lose your checkpoints and have to fall back or you lose something and have to fall back, it can mean hours of wasted time. Well, yeah, your downtime is really coming down to your offline, you're offlining very expensive resources. So in the past where it's like, oh, well, you might not be able to support customer demands. Mm -hmm. Now it's coming down to your expensive hardware's offline. Absolutely, and so that's a problem, and these dedicated RAID cards, the Perk 13 helps address that. And to your point, because they're on the, the Gen 5 bus with the GPUs, they're not getting in the way either. Yeah. So Kevin mentioned that we've got a lot of charts in the review, all the MLPerv, GDSIO, all that stuff you mentioned, FIO, we've got what, 28, 30 charts in there? If for the I nerds. Think a little bit more. Maybe more. So if you're really a, a RAID gearhead and want to tear into the performance, you can do that. And it should be noted that these are, what, what were they, 3.2 terabyte write intensive SSDs? Yeah, so there, there are faster drives than these on the market. So mm -hmm. you're, you're, you could see greater performance. And obviously, there are higher capacity QLC variants where you could see lower performance, it really comes down to the capacity. drives. Yeah, it really comes down to the drive that you're going to use. Yeah, there's never been more choice over storage you know, than there is right now. Capacity, performance, cost, all of it, right? Well, yeah, it just comes down to what you need and what you can afford. 
Uh, so check out the full review. That's linked in the description below that has all the charts that you could possibly want. Um, what else have we missed? Management's through uh, iDRAC and there's a CLI tool as well. Yeah, the uh, store CLI or uh, perk CLI. Mm -hmm. um, from, the, uh, from your OS level, you can create uh, visuals, you can pull status. Um, more scripting actions. So if you need to have, uh, you're provisioning a lot of uh, background resources, you can do that through the uh, through OS. Uh, and if you're looking to manage this from an out-of-band management perspective, you can still go in through iDRAC and other utilities like that. Okay. So, I mean, overall, the key takeaway is Perk 13, this card, the H975i from Dell, is really quite fantastic. The silicon is purpose-built for NVMe, so no more SATA SAS uh, holdover, which really lets these drives sing in a platform that's entirely flexible with two H100s in it, 32 SSDs. I'm getting more and more impressed every time we look at these PowerEdge platforms about how much can be done in one platform and how flexible they are to accommodate whatever it is that you want. Well, yeah, I mean, we look at, it's fun to look at a server and say, there's not really a lot you could change to make it better. Right. And Dell's really looked at every single different permutation of a lot of servers and really giving you an offering that you want a little bit more storage for instance, there's that for it. You want direct attached to NVMe, there's that. If yep. you want uh, a ton of GPUs in the TU box, they offer that. It just depends on what you want to do. And Dell's got a lead on this. They've got the first server to ship with this silicon. So if you want NVMe RAID, hardware RAID, this is it right now. And I don't know that there's going to be a competitor offering this until next year sometime. Yeah, we haven't seen it yet, but... Yeah, we don't know. But Dell went hard in the paint on this one and decided that they wanted this card before anyone else. And so they uh, put in the, the work to do it. So we've got it. It's, it's a great uh, setup, really intelligently designed with the front mount cards that uh, don't waste space, don't block cooling, and uh, overall it's a really great solution. So if you're thinking that uh, hardware RAID isn't NVMe ready, I encourage you, check out our data. We've got a ton of it. I think you might change your mind and realize that modern NVMe RAID is a thing, and this Perk 13 is a great way to do it.